welcome to st. paul's wimbledon parkside easter sunday celebration and eucharist if you would like to follow the order of service you will find it on our website at www dot st. paul's parkside dot org dot uk you might also like to have a candle and a means of lighting it ready for the liturgy after the easter candle has entered are you, Lord God of all creation. You be glory and praise forever. Your steadfast love extends to the heaven, and your faithfulness never ceases. Illuminate our hearts with your wisdom, and strengthen our lives with your word, for you are the fountain of life. In your light we see true light. Blessed be God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to Him, and all ages, to Him be glory and power every age and forever. Amen. By his glorious, his holy and glorious wounds, Christ our Lord, God and Jesus. all darkness from our hearts and minds.
Life of Christ. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, risen and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from all your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll sing the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, 
Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And now we'll have our first two readings. first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning with the first verse. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus, says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samariah. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill of in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go to, up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning with the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is the one ordained by God, as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of the sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we sing hymn number 348. Jesus Christ is risen today.
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the gods shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him. They took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we recall, with great celebration, what happened on that first Easter sunrise. When we contemplate just a bit more deeply what that might have been like, we realize that it may not have been filled with instant and overwhelming joy for those present. In fact, it probably provoked more, actually more than surprise, but bewilderment. Mary Magdalene and another Mary, we actually don't know who, which Mary that was, um, but they went to visit the tomb. And suddenly, there was a second earthquake in three days, and an angel descending before them who somehow appeared as both lightning and snow. It was, once again, holy commotion. Remember, Matthew previously told us that the soldiers were on guard at the tomb. So we can imagine the scene of these two women and these guardsmen. Quite a contrast. All were at the tomb. All felt the earthquake. The gods shook with fear, as we were told, and they became like dead men. The women, on the other hand, while quite afraid, I'm sure, were able to act. They weren't frozen in fear. They were invited to experience the depth of the emptiness of Jesus' absence to express the profound longing that required a new understanding of God. The emptiness of the tomb, for them, did not speak of resurrection. It was the going to Galilee that sparked their new hope. Galilee was where they had first met Jesus, and it would be the place where they would receive a new understanding of Christ. In these moments, perhaps days, fear was not paralyzing. There was joy, real joy as well. And that mix of fear and joy gave them a new energy to act. These were times full of awe and wonder. So, the women ran. But Jesus was quicker still and interrupted their sprint. The response of the two Marys was to worship him. But it isn't long before they are off again with a message from Jesus. Tell my brothers to go to Galilee where they will see me. Feels quite chaotic. But the women have a steady footing. Then the women are back in action. Perhaps that where, that's where we notice that prayer and action actually go together. Hearing and listening to Christ is acutely important. And then taking the appropriate action is also very important. We see here that just as the disciples were once called to proclaim the good news, here Mary and Mary have been given the mission to, of telling the brothers to go to Galilee to meet Jesus. And once there, they, were, they will be told to make disciples of all the nations. This Gospel reading depicts speechless, fearful women who had been through a devastating ordeal. They are spurred into action and yet seem not to, do, not to know what to do next. The angel gives them very clear and direct instructions. Do not be afraid. Come and see the tomb. In other words, take stock of its emptiness. What was once there is gone, a thing of the past, so leave it there. 
quickly go and tell the others that Jesus is risen and he's going before you. In other words, move on. This was not the end. There is a way forward. You will see him in Galilee. Move on with the, with the journey without perfect clarity. Have faith. God is in this. And things will become clearer in the fullness of time. In these days of pandemic and lockdown, with our lives seemingly turned upside down, fear and bewilderment are apparent on many levels. But there is something of God to be found. There may not be clarity now, but surely there will be gifts. Some of those gifts are materializing already, if only our eyes are open to see. The responses of so many people, the self-giving of doctors and nurses, of first responders, but also so many wonderful people in our communities who are so generously opening themselves to new opportunities, new relationships. God is with us. Do not be afraid. There is a way forward. All will become clearer in the fullness of time. For now, rest assured, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. We now come to our time of intercession. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope and joy of resurrection, let us pray to the risen Lord who loves us so completely we pray for all who have been called by Christ to serve the world as his followers. That initial enthusiasm may not die, but deepen, to set us all on fire with his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a fairer distribution of the world's resources so that life and hope are brought to the starving and homeless, for places where fear and violence rule, that peace and justice may be restored. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel that they are wasting their lives, for those under pressure, at home or at work, for all who feel lost, uncertain, or worthless, that God's living power may stabilize, heal, and recreate them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, for our friends and our relatives, and any difficulties or problems that may be known to us, that in all our troubles we may be open to the healing and renewing life of Christ, which has power to bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the silence of God's accepting love, we pray our individual prayer.
And in this time of the pandemic, we pray for the safety of the world and we cry to you, Lord, for protection for the healthy, courage for the frightened, consolation for the bereaved, wisdom for the doctors, strength for the carers, good news for the poor, and in the goodness of your mercy, an end to the virus. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for the peace. Christ descended to death and hell, passed through the doors locked by fear to breathe the spirit of peace and to make us one humanity. Nothing can now separate us from the love of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia. Let us wish one another peace and a very happy Easter. Lord of life, with unbounded joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection joy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And on this day of our redemption, 
to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your Son, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the power of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make a memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, coming, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, and as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one into your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Paul and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And as we acknowledge and celebrate our unity in spiritual communion, as we cannot uh, share communion, we say, Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence as the hem of your garment, touched in faith, healed the women in the gospel. So may I be healed. Although I cannot receive you in the sacrament, in this sacrament, I can, through his offering of my prayer, receive you in my heart. Grant this for Christ's sake. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily with, to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! God the Father, by whose glorious Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. 
We'll now sing our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory. the risen life of Christ within you. Go in peace, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>